it is very important for me to to find justice because um, there was a life, you know, here wandering. You know, uh, I have a lot of questions that I would love to be answered. You know, from 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 them. And um, it might not be today, and I might be tomorrow, but I know that justice will be served one day. And I can't wait for that moment. Freddie was everything to me. He was, he was the one who made me a mom at the age of 17. Um, you know, he was a spoiled child, um, a joker. He used to love to joke, do a lot of joke. Um, I love his smile, he had a beautiful smile. His little gap, beautiful. Um, Freddie was uh, a special child to me. Joshua growing up was very, very loving, very funny. He was very caring. Joshua was like everything I had. He saw, we went through it together. Him growing up, he saw most of our struggles, being my firstborn. You can never explain how hard it is to really lose someone. It's just so hard, and to know that he was my son, it's harder when I think that somebody just took his life. Friends and family say goodbye at a memorial for a Bronx teen stabbed to death. Now his mother wants answers as police officers try to find his killer. Our Jessica Formoso has the story. We thank you, God, for being able to call on your name, Father. On Friday night, family, friends, and community leaders gathered together to pray for answers in the death of 17-year-old Joshua Baez. We, we're praying for that justice to come out. We're praying because we know that by prayer and supplication, God will supply. Everybody's different, right? And everybody works different. Everybody copes different. And I've coped by being away and just continuing with my family and the kids so they could be happy. But um, I haven't been on top of my son's case as much as I probably should have been or wanted to, but um, you know, now I'm just coming back from looking some things up and trying to find out some information. And I think I'm just ready now to really start making some noise and, and bringing things to light where they could, people could start wanting to talk or I don't know, wanting to make some, I need to make enough noise to get people scared. Because I know that there's people that know something. Hi, um, Sergeant, this is Miss Soto. Alfredo Colazzo's mother, how are you? Too? I'm very well, how are you? Coming along, coming along. Um, any, anything new, anything new on the case? Uh, not, nothing of relevance yet. They're, they're moving him to a different prison to try to uh, in, incite him to, to speak a little more, but the, the, it, it's still going. It's just gonna be a slow process. We, we haven't forgotten. Um, did you guys want to see him? Uh, we did. 
and he, he wasn't happy to see us and you know he still claims he's not a rat he's not a rat so as a punishment they sent him to a different prison even further away oh. but all, 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 all that stuff is going to start down in federal court and they're going to be bringing him down there shortly I'm angry but it never comes out because my brother died and um, this yeah, this killer's still out there, and my my cousin doesn't want to confess who is who he um who he is. His life and his legacy will still go on. So you you killed his body, but you will never kill his memory ever. That will never happen. I was right here um with his younger brother and his baby sister, which she's not here right now, her name is Maria. Um, we was putting that table together. And when I got home, I saw the mess of, of the stand and it, everything was incompleted. There was beans that were not even cooked and the rice was not even cooked. I'm like, okay. It was like, it was, it was, it was just whatever. I'm like, she, she probably had an emergency. Because before all this happened, he was here with me that, that morning. We was here, we was talking, he was making jokes out of my boiled eggs. Never thought, never crossed my mind that that would be the last time that I would, you know, speak to him or see him or whatever. So um, at four, it was four what? I got the phone call. My mom, she texts me for my dad's number, and I already had a feeling in my gut that something happened. I took long. I took long because I didn't want to face the fact that hear that bad news, you know. So um, when I got to the hospital, my sister was already there. His father just blood, just shouted like that. He's dead. And he said, um, it's your brother. He's been shot and he was killed. And when that was said to me, my whole world crumbled. And I fell on the floor and I told mom, no, no, <laughs> that's not possible. No, that you're wrong. That just, that just can't be. And that just devastated me. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He had the best smile. And that one, he was smiling. This one, he's serious. I never would have imagined myself going through what I went through. Um, having to hold this poster up or even have it up on a wall. I always expected to have him here. This is my brother's blanket. I sleep with it every night. And it helps me feel comfortable and know that wherever he is, that he's fine. I want to ever to see the person that killed my brother, I would probably like everyone else feel angry, mad at that person, and hope that justice gets served to him. I'll definitely feel mad knowing that he's just walking around doing whatever he wants after taking a person's life. But the police never got it right. Especially the detective. He never called me another day in his life. Oh, maybe. I should have tried to get the number. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Hello, do you hear me? I can hear you. Um, am I speaking with Detective Rentas? Who's speaking? This is Yamilet Cambaro. I don't know if you're gonna know who I am off the back, but I'll have to get into detail. Are you Detective Rentas? Yeah, okay. where, where you from? Okay, who am I speaking with? This is 
the tax of renters. Okay, Mr. Rentas, this is Yamile Camaro, and I am calling you in regards to the case of Joshua Bias. Yes. You were the assigned officer for the case. It's been a while that me and you don't speak. A very long while. Okay. And what's your, uh, your relationship to Mr. Bias? Mr. Bias, I was, I'm Mr. Bias's mother. Okay, how you doing, ma'am? How are you? Now, do you remember Mr. Sure. Bias? Um, any way that I can call you in a, in a few hours? Okay, you can call me in a few hours, that's fine. Okay. You probably ain't even gonna call me back. I'm surprised he still has the same number. This is the reason I always don't call, because they always have something, an excuse. I need to see Mr. Detective Rentas. Okay. Just wait a little bit. Is he around? Is he available? He'll be here soon. He starts at 4. Starts at so 4? So he'll be here in a little bit. Okay. All right? Okay. Just have a seat in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But what do you what do you need to know? You want to find out what, what's going on? I want to find out what's going on because it's been five years. Five years, right. 2012, if I'm correct. It's been five years. I decided to move. Right. and let you guys do your job. Right. But from day one, you guys have never called me. Ever. Ever. I have the same phone number. All I hear is, oh, parents are annoying. They think we don't, have, we don't do our job. They don't think that we, we, we don't have a million homicides. Well, you know what? This is my homicide. This is my son. Understand. And I'm here right. to talk about him. From this point on, we saw traces of blood. It looks like he held on for, for life for a while, according to what I heard and what we saw of blood by the crime scene area. And then he, we finally, when he was found, he had made it to about this point, his body went over the hood of the car when he got to this point. I guess he didn't have any more strength or energy. Then he fell, he slid off the car because he didn't fall down. It's like he was gripping himself to the car. As the trace mark of the crime scene, you can see that he slid down until he hit his face on the edge of this, the sidewalk here, the edge of the sidewalk. He landed literally on the tire of the car, in front of the tire of the car that was parked. But then he laid there looking down for, I want to say almost two hours according to what people were saying. At that point it was very upsetting because he didn't get home and then he probably would have made it if people would have called the police or ambulance before. According to his wounds, and according to funeral services, he was fighting for his life. And you want to say it was about an attack of four people had him held down. To be able to stab his heart the way they did, they had to, they had to hold his hands up at one point or the other. Like, because he had wounds in his hands, like he was fighting for his life. In his memory, we'll start doing different events, trying to see if that'll help us get get back some information. You know, I have to get creative with ideas that are gonna help us. Cause I, I, I want justice, I wanna see it. And I know if I could help some way, we could get it done. As long as God gives me air to breathe, I'm always gonna be here. And I'm, I'm gonna be here to the day I die, waiting for his justice.